Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this uh, exciting CIUM lecture. I'm Joseph Lam, the director of the Confucius Institute. I would like to welcome you here, and I'm happy to see you. Now, first, I want to tell you that uh, the CIUM, uh, the Confucius Institute, is launched to promote Chinese arts and culture, but in a global context. This is why we are doing this wonderful topic to show how Chinese culture actually is really part of the world, and the China is not just one place. It has a lot of people uh, uh, interaction with different people's uh, cultures throughout history. And Jewish people, do you know that how old Jewish people have to live in China? Maybe not that, but, but we have very clear historical records of Jewish settlement in the high form of the northern Song capital. So today we have uh, one of the most uh, uh, important uh, Chinese authorities on this topic of Jewish culture in China, Professor Tang Yateng. He is a distinguished uh, musicologist, translator, and he has translated many books from English to Chinese and vice versa. But he's uh, mostly distinguished for his research on Jewish music and culture in Shanghai. And he is doing a number of fascinating uh, projects. One is writing the history of an early Chinese orchestra, uh, Western orchestra in Shanghai with a lot of Jewish and Russian immigrants and musicians. So that is one part of Chinese history that not many people know the data but should be known because China in my mind and everyone's mind does not exist in Asia by itself. It's really a part of the whole world, the Jewish people, Chinese people. So I think this is a wonderful time to hear from a distinguished scholar to see how the old world, the new world, Chinese people, non-Chinese people, Jewish people really interact together. So I understand that he has a fascinating, uh, richly illustrated music and picture talk. So go and join with the further ado, Professor Tan. First, let's have a look at uh, a fragment from the film called The Last Resort. The hired singers and actors who started digging up little skits in the nightclubs and restaurants, and uh, well, not quite a few nightclubs along Broadway on the auction side because uh, that's where good money was to be made. You know? It was interesting to note that Moses became known to the more adventurous and the international settlement of Yamama. They came to see these shows and uh, was a lot of them. And the raising an album was adapted from a very famous Jewish operetta. <coughs> especially popular in the Tokyo Ghetto period. And uh, here you can find there are two lines of verse stands, uh, uh, the little gold has been fated to, to wander, that will be your fate too. So these two lines uh, vividly describe uh, the destiny of the Jews at the time. Now we call it a diaspora, it means a wandering community all over the world. And this is my book in Chinese. I will present one to the Confucius, the Confucius Institute uh, after my talk. And this is the context of my book. You can find that chapter two is about Kai Fung, uh, the earliest Chinese uh, community. Uh, Jewish community in China in the northern Song Dynasty, uh, and then Harbin in the early 20th century, and the early Shanghai also in, in the 1920s and 30s, and so on. Uh, but today I will focus on the yellow chapters. <laughs> Jewish refugees in, in World War II, uh, especially the early arrival, Hong Kong ghetto period, post war period, 
and events and contribution outside the community and aftermath. So contents of my talk is, first I'll give you a prologue. The Jewish musicians under Nazi regime before they came to Shanghai, and then pre-war situation in Shanghai. Their early period, ghetto period, post-war period, and contributions and some concluding words. And this is my articles on this topic in English, and, and you can find it. One is in Journal of Music in China, 2002. The other is in the British Ethnomicology Forum of uh, 2004. So uh, today's content is about like this. The theme is music is the key expressive marker of cultural identity. Uh, which means uh, it occupies a central place in Shanghai Jewish diaspora. Uh, then, uh, well, but uh, it had a dual ethnic. It was dual ethnic in nature, both Jewish niche and Europeanness. Uh, that's the way of diaspora's existence. Purpose for this research, uh, I would like to explore the nexus between this, the following three: uh, the historical context the social structure to support cultural life and experience of music. It resolves the, the question, how does music function in a specific historical context and social structure so complicated as in Shanghai? First, uh, the prologue. Why Jews left Nazi regime? In January 1933, Hitler seized the power. In the same year, July, uh, German Jewish Kulturbund, which means culture league, was established. But it was dominated by Nazi. Uh, thus, a Jewish culture ghetto formed. That is to say, uh, the Jewish cultural space were limited, were only limited within their own community. For example, they can held, uh, they could held concert only in their own house, uh, not in public. Uh, so their culture space was very limited. Uh, uh, the worst situation happened in November 1938. Uh, uh, the notorious crystal night, that means crystal uh, night, happened. Uh, so a uh, pogrom against the Jews started. Uh, they had to exile most of U.S., Latin America, Palestine, and some fled to Shanghai because in Shanghai, no visa was needed at the time. And also, Shanghai has a tradition uh, not uh, anti semitic So my talk will consist of physical evidence and the paper trail. Takingly, uh, taking mainly Austrian, German, Polish, or other Eastern European Jewish refugees, as well as other Jewish communities like Russian Jews. The physical evidence here means some old historical buildings and sites in Shanghai. Uh, first, uh, they were used for worship with sacred music, uh, like theaters, especially for the Austrian German Jews, as well as synagogues built by <coughs> Baghdadis and Russians uh, for, for Polish Jews. And then they were also used for entertainment with sacred music, like in theaters, clubs, parks, bars, school auditorium. Paper tree have been sources and photos. Uh, it, were it, it describes situations, institutions, people, and events, musical and non musical, covering musical critics, news reports, memoirs, archives, programs, posters, tickets, advertisements, even novels. So the following is mostly a pictorial representation of this history or in estimate ecology we call it an iconography. The institutions supporting musical life uh, are like for the following. The first, the most famous one is ADRAS, Association of Jewish Artists Society. Then, the next three is also for music. Uh, and SMA is a, is a Shanghai music. Musicians Association, including all the foreign musicians in Shanghai. Uh, and, and number four is 
the, the Shanghai Jewish community is administration, <coughs> like a little government. And Azos is for Zionist. Uh, and uh, SY, SJY School is Shanghai Jewish Youth <coughs> Association School, then Russian Jewish Club, then Austrian Center, then an economic organization, <coughs> Kitchen Fund, then some radio stations like H, uh, XMHA. All music tackle in the case, including Jewish, Yiddish traditional music, liturgical, and folk, European Jewish popular music, pops, bar music, cabaret music, uh, cabaret music drama <coughs> operator, European art music, pre-war situation in Shanghai. Shanghai was a city with three governments at the time, international settlement dominated by British and American, then French concession than Chinese nationalist government. Uh, and with some large communities like Japanese, uh, 10,000 uh, at its peak period, uh, 100,000 at its peak period, and white Russians, uh, 20,000, including 5,000 Ashkenazi Jews, Jews, and the Baghdadi Sephardi merchant community. But they had withdrawn to Hong Kong before the war and they were British nationals, <coughs> thus creating a relaxed, free metropolis as paradise of adventurers. <laughs> and this is the situation before the war. You can find the, the light one uh, is the, uh, the Anglo-American uh, dominated international settlement, and the brown one is the French town, mm -hmm. and all the white one. This is the oldest uh, Chinatown. We call it Nanshu. And all these broad areas are new areas for Chinese people. <coughs> and this is the Huangpu River. And this is the Suzhou Creek. Uh, and this is the south, this is the north. Uh, and, in the south in the, and in the south is a relatively rich area. And, it, and, and this area is rather poor. And you can find that the Jewish ghetto was in Hong Kong. <laughs> and this is the Municipal Council of the International Settlement. And, and today it is a governmental office building in the very center. And this is the constables of the foreign, uh, foreigners. You find uh, the six, uh, the Vietnamese, the Chinese, and the Westerners. And this is the Conseil Administration Municipal de la Concession. Uh, also the uh, French town's council building. The Shanghai National Government. Uh, now it is in the... Uh, And now it, now it is in the Shanghai Sports University. <laughs> it's about here, but not uh, in this part of the map. This Japanese area in Hongkyo, they call it Little Tokyo. And it's watch the white Russians dance for in the new year. So in 1937, the Japanese occupied Shanghai. That started the Sino-Japanese War. And this is a very vivid representation of the situation at, at the war, before the war time. Uh, this is Mario Pachi, yeah. uh, the, the famous conductor of the Shanghai Municipal Orchestra. But uh, he had to face the, uh, Japanese guns and the cannons. So it's very curious. But uh, at this period, uh, they can uh, they are in uh, they were in peace uh, with each other. The first period is early arrival period uh, until 1942, 
After Crystal Knight, about 18,000 or more Jewish refugees fled to Shanghai, including 300 to 400 militias, about 2%, both professional or amateur included. This is the war, the war the road hide in Hong Kong. And this is the interior seat of the ghetto. Mm -hmm. And this is their commercial center. Uh, they called it Little Vienna. And now, today, it is still existing. If you came to Shanghai, you, you can find it. And this is Roy Roof Garden, uh, a bar or a pub. It's like in Vienna. <laughs> <laughs> and the posters. A comedy, operetta, a concert, uh, and uh, drama, Pygmalion uh, by Bernard Shaw, the last one. And this is uh, a very famous operetta by Carmen. Pani Gay Dancing is by a very Famous the German composer. This is two synagogues. This one is called O'Hare Marsh, built, built in 1902 in Hong Kong by Russian Jews. And the other one in 1927 is Besahar in the international settlement. Uh, built by Hadoum, Hadoum. Uh, the rich mer merchant from Baghdad. And, and this one has become a famous, British, uh, a famous Jewish museum. Uh, and this one uh, was destroyed, torn, turned down, uh, and became the, uh, the building for a newspaper. And this is in Besa Harun's uh, Polish to religious school. Uh, they call it Mirror Yeshiva. Uh, it's very, uh, the space is very wide. And this is third one, O'Hare Russia, by Kaduri uh, International no Settlement, <coughs> built in 1920s. And now it became an auditorium uh, for the Shanghai Educational Community. Committed. But uh, if you like to visit, uh, you can, uh, you should be approved by the Shanghai government. Uh, <laughs> but the new Shanghai communities use it uh, in their important festivals. <clears throat> and this is the latest, built in 1941 by Russians, by Russian Jews, La Du Synagogue. It is in French town, and this one is near the conservatory. Uh, but now it is at shops. It, it is a great pity. And then their Jewish, uh, Yiddish traditional musical life, uh, this concert, you can find it, it is uh, uh, sponsored by the Chapel Fine USA. <laughs> Culture community of Jewish community. Uh, cultural committee of Jewish uh, community. Uh, committee, community. <laughs> <laughs> the singers, uh, synagogue singers, cantors. Oh, they were also guest professors in the Shanghai Conservatory at the time. Uh, Max Warschau, very famous. Uh, all the three ones were trained in their canto style. Uh, so they often attended, they often participated in the concert, uh, the secular concert, uh, or in opera operetta. Uh, and the second one is Joseph Fruchta. The last one is Hans Beckmann. And the Shanghai Jewish Club, uh, this is the old one. And this one is now the Shanghai Conservatory of Music. Uh, since 1947, since 1947, it became the Shanghai Russian Jewish Club. And this is a, a, a poster uh, of the concert held uh, in this one. 
by Raja Beshavsky. Uh, it, 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 it obviously was a white Russian Jew. And it's Greta Kleiner, folk singer. Uh, he gave um, a recital uh, in, in, uh, in the, the, the club above. And it so happened that I met her son in UCLA this time when I gave him a talk. <laughs> and he <laughs> shouted, this was my mother. <laughs> and he gave me the picture to see uh, her mother's married photo. Yeah. <laughs> it's her Strickman, Yiddish singer. A child of the East. Uh, she was called Childhood, Child of the East, a very favorite uh, star in Hong Kong area. Russia Zomina from Lithuania. Uh, and when I was in Sydney in 2004, I, I just heard that uh, she was staying in Melbourne. But, it, uh, but it's so urgent because I, I would uh, fly, to uh, fly to Shanghai. Uh, so I hadn't enough time to meet her. Uh, and this photo was taken in 1980s. And she formed a ZZ cabaret duet, Zomina <laughs> Tselik. Tselik uh, uh, was from Berlin, uh, from Berlin, a very famous cabaret singer, a, a human star also. Uh, this is uh, the cabaret music. Uh, and this lady was called Shoshana from Poland. Uh, as soon as she arrived in Shanghai, she organized a drama and music uh, society to, to perform uh, many concerts or dramas. And this very famous Viennese film star, Lily Flo. Uh, when she arrived, she gave a Shanghai Week uh, with cabaret program, singing, dancing, uh, and even uh, Miss Shanghai Select competition, and even Boxing match. <laughs> a very uh, various variety. <laughs> but she was very famous and she acted in many operettas later. You can find it. A New Year Gala, 1941. Uh, very, uh, a lot of events. And this is a very interesting thing. Very style and white tap. They call it uh, Paul Hager, Paul Hager, you know, which means white tap after a greasing model uh, in Vienna. As an imagined homeland, and you can find here dance, music, mood, wine, and the bow bow might be a spirit, a kind of spirit. And also Shrama. Shrama music. Shrama, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Schrammer. is a very famous Viennese uh, quartet, uh, founded in the 18th century or so. Uh, so it, it, it put it here uh, to show this is Viennese. So it so happened when I visited Vienna in 2007, I took some photos of the Hohegger uh, at the Green Sea near Beethoven's home. Uh, there is one. Uh, so I take photos. This balalaika uh, is like a bar. Uh, after the play, you can visit the nightclub balalaika. <laughs> Avenue Joff is now Huaihai Road. Huaihai Road. Uh, Huai Road. And all these are, are the sponsors for the concert. <laughs> European art music, and you can find in this concert <coughs> program uh, the music by Mozart, Schumann, Verdi, Liszt, uh, and uh, Gounod, and Greek, and so on. Uh, so, inside or outside the community, they also played Western or European art music. So this is the, the address 
to their favorite ages. Uh, uh, and, and the German Jewish people and the musicians uh, has a habit uh, to organize uh, some societies uh, to get together uh, like a union, like the German Culture League. So when they arrived in Shanghai, they organized uh, an organization, a society called Ajas. Uh, so these three people are uh, the souls of, of, of Ajas. Uh, uh, the first one is Margot Linsky, uh, uh, the famous Jewish conductor and also piano uh, poet uh, and organizer of, of many concerts. The second one was his assistant, Le Shemba, uh, from Harlem, Germany. And also once uh, a, a musician, a player uh, in the Gavant House in Leipzig. Uh, and the, the last one is called Leo Fox, also a famous conductor. This guy is, uh, was from Hungary, uh, but he was a Jew. Austria, Austrian, Hungarian, Jewish musician. Uh, and he later, he was the concert master of the Shanghai Municipal Orchestra. Uh, and that one uh, was a composer, Hans Bell. And I found some archives in Germany that before the war, uh, he was very famous in Berlin and, and often gave concerts there. This is an amateur. Chamber Orchestra, 1939. Mm. This is the, the third concert, the Eastern Theater. And there's some <laughs> cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> the, the soprano, <coughs> the pianist, uh, four. Uh, yeah. Four is yeah. the, the Italian Jew. Uh, and, and this one, the young, the name. Yes, and media and critics. Uh, uh, this one, the one, the first and the second one are music critics, uh, and they rewrote many articles in the newspapers about uh, on the concerts. And the last one is oscillating is editor in chief of the famous Shanghai Jewish Chronicle, a German actually a German newspaper. And this is the Shanghai newspapers. Jewish papers at the time, uh, they got a lot of them. Uh, but now they didn't exist in Shanghai. It's a great pity. I found all these things in, in America, especially in New York, Evil, and in Harvard, in Stanford. And this is their radio station, XMHA, attached to America's NBC, Horst Levy. German program uh, each day, one hour, uh, broadcasting news and music. And I found their program uh, on the newspaper. Uh, this week's radio program. And this is another, uh, this is another XCDN, is another radio station attached to, uh, to BBC. Uh, these photos are, are taken after the war, and there is collaboration between the uh, Jewish and the Chinese musicians. And in 1941, December, December 1941, the Japanese occupied the new settlement, and so as they uh, attacked Americans in Pearl Harbor. So the Japanese Marine soldiers occupied Shanghai. And then came the Hong Kong ghetto period. Japanese took over the international settlement and the French concession and forced all Central European Jewish refugees into Hong Kong. And also they, uh, uh, they, um, uh, they drove the, all the foreigners, not uh, uh, the allied foreigners, uh, into some central uh, concentration camp. Uh, into the suburbs of Shanghai. The most difficult time for Jews, supported by the Kitchen Fund, was money mainly from the U.S. Jewish Union. Uh, flourishing European art music, 
as well as Viennese operetta uh, uh, were very popular at the time. <coughs> and this is uh, the Shahe music, this is the SMA's program, uh, Stateless Refugees. Uh, it's called the uh, uh, Summer Concert, Strauss and Le Hau E. And this is uh, uh, their program. Uh, you can find the first their uh, emperor, Japanese emperor's march, and then their marine march, then Schubert uh, and Strauss. Uh, this is the Schubert nice, <coughs> and the other one is in Japanese. The Gala concert in 1942 or 43, or something like that. Uh, all the famous stars in the ghetto. Now, the today's Eastern Theater, it became uh, <laughs> guest house, bus, oh. for leisure, film, KTV, <coughs> and so on. It's, it's a great thing. And Broadway Theater, mm -hmm. also seafood. <laughs> and internet bar. <laughs> Operetta, sing, or in German, Singspiel. Uh, uh, this was composed by two German composers in Shanghai. <clears throat> Each carries his bundle. Uh, and started by Unser Rosa, means our Rosa, a very red star in Operetta, in Hong Kong Ghetto. Yeah. And he, mm -hmm. she also started the Mary Widow by by your, uh, by, the, your, uh, by Franz Lehau and under the Carmen operator. Uh, in English it's called the the Revy Erigo. Uh, and also by Carmen. Uh, in English it's called the Countess Marisa. Also Viennese operator. And this one, the Lilac Time, uh, is adapted from Schubert's music. Uh, it's, uh, in German, it means three made, three matching house. Uh, but in English, it, it was habitually called the, the lack of time. Mm -hmm. Outside the Jewish community, <coughs> they had some cooperation with the SMO, Shanghai Municipal Orchestra. After Japanese took over the SMO in 1922, Jewish dominated conductorship and more than 10 Jewish ministries hand, joining hands with it during and after the war. <coughs> this is the newspaper reports, the Japanese typical of the SMO. Orchestra to continue functioning but not as a municipal enterprise. So, uh, so take, over, take over by the Japanese. This is the former Italian conductor, Mario Pacci. And he only promised to act as guest conductor during the Japanese time. And he was Pacci's assistant, uh, called Ario, Ario Gofoa, an Italian Jew. Uh, and he's, he started the Jewish period of, of conductorship. And this is another uh, Jewish conductor, a white Russian Jew, uh, called the Maestro Alexander Suski. And, th and that one, to I know, is from Berlin, Magolinsky. And after the war, Henry Magolinsky moved to America and died there. And in Ardo of Shalomov, uh, a composer and a guest conductor of the SMO. And he also created a lot of Chinese style pieces. And this is nationality statistics of the 50 militias in 1942. Uh, uh, the Jewish here are from Russian, Italian, Russia, Italian, uh, and Austria, Germany. So the top uh, numbers were Russians and Italian and Austro German. So this is the program. Uh, 1942 to 43. Japanese and English. And the licensing for winter seasons uh, is still existing. 
19 theater, now called Shanghai Concert Hall. The Hunko Park for summer session, for summer seasons. And this is Hunko Park's music pavilion for summer seasons. And this is French Park, French Town for summer seasons. So post-war period, upshift period, or, or called farewell period. Uh, the themes in musical life in this period uh, was departure with strengthened identification for homeland, idea for new Israel, mm -hmm. that is Zionism, uh, then gratitude to Shanghai, then commemoration of the death, especially the dead composers, the dead musicians. Uh, this, is a, this is a fair way of saying. Mm -hmm. About in 1947 until 1948, uh, this is the time. The, the high tide of the living. So this one is Louis Levy, uh, a bass. <coughs> he held his recital for farewell. And that one was in memory of the famous composer, the, the Berlin composer, Dr. Arthur Wolf. And his Austrian center, uh, and, and I took a photo in 2006, and now it still existed. As a resident, as a resident community now. And these Austrian centers, posters, or, or advertisements. This is the general Zionist organization's evening program. And you find dance, uh, singing, accordion, violin, and the piano. So it's very simple. Because the time is very hard, that they had no money to to print the beautiful programs. This is Johann Strauss' debate as a gratitude to Shanghai, and you can find interesting things in the ticket. Uh, uh, you find this uh, this performance is dedicated in gratitude to the Allied nations and Shanghai. <coughs> and in this uh, operetta, uh, uh, the five airline nations national anthem uh, was played. <laughs> played. So in gratitude to the airline nations, uh, uh, and, no, and also the blue, uh, the blue tone uh, by Johann Strauss oh, yes. uh, was also performed. Uh, uh, but this song or this tune uh, isn't for the bat uh, and they're being inserted into the, the plane. <laughs> and this is Siegfried Sonnenschein, uh, a, a popular composer from Dresden. Uh, Dresden. Uh, that means good, that means say, are you good to me? This is an an American story uh, uh, describing an oil tycoon, his uh, relationship with his daughter and sons, uh, uh, mixed with love and conspiracy and so on, <laughs> and very popular with jazz and folks, uh, and, and even most uh, uh, current pops at the time. Uh, so it is like a mixture of operetta and musical, uh, but but musical hasn't reached Shanghai at that time. So their contributions to Shanghai, like a Russian Jewish musician since 1905 and, and 1917, uh, 19 musicians in SMO and several in the conservatory. Uh, the Central European Jewish musicians since 1939 also played major roles in Shanghai and musical. <coughs> For example, in SMO 10 to 14 even, and in the conservatory, over 10 guest professors. Both brought forth musical pillars for later China. Uh, Jewish contributed at least three conductors to SMO during and after World War II. And you can find an, an article in this period about SMO uh, in the European Journal published in Berlin <coughs> called The World of Music. 2012. Uh, 
this is the 19th conceptual music in 1930s. Uh, and this is uh, Russian Jewish uh, teachers. Uh, the bass Shusley. Uh, she cultivated many, many famous singers for China. And that lady was a pianist, Levity. And Xu Xing married a Chinese wife. Uh, so she loved China very much. And uh, he stayed in China until 1959 or so, back to Soviet Union. And they both forgot Franco, uh, an, an indirect uh, disciple of Schoenberg. Uh, so uh, he was the first musician uh, brought with he Schoenberg's 12 note uh, technique. And that one is Wittenberg. Uh, she left his students very much and stayed in Shanghai until 1953 and died in a dormitory. It's a great pity. And, and he was very famous in Berlin and once worked in Berlin Opera House. And this was Wittenberg and his students. And this one, Hans Ruten later became the vice president of the Shanghai Conservatory after 1949. And the female Austro German Jewish vocal professors in the conservatory. Also pronouns. And this is Irene Makolinsky, is the conductor Makolinsky's wife. And, and some concluding words. Functionings, <coughs> functions of musical life. Means of so music is a means of daily struggle for, for livelihood to even rely on relief from kitchen funds, only with two meals a day. So the days are very poor, very hard. But they were also, but music was also food for soul, for political idea, for their identity and their ethnicity. All events supported by social institutions, uh, including musical, commercial, and political ones, uh, but with flexible tactics against Japanese, such as they played the Japanese uh, music before their own music uh, as a compromise. <coughs> So they had to show their Jewish identity. The people also supported by homeland imagination, that is, identified by nationality and ethnicity alike. And uh, an identity, both for Europeans, outside the community, they only played art music. But inside, uh, they showed their Jewishness with all, with all kinds of music, including art, religious, folk, pop. So, that is the way of diaspora existence in such complicated surroundings as wartime Shanghai, no less than they had faced in their European homeland. <coughs> the end of the the, the end of the, the refugee life, but still the deteriorating world and China's situation after Japanese surrender was very complicated. You know. uh, later, uh, the communist and the nationalist uh, war started. Uh, so Shanghai is dislocation, dislocated, and the Chinese nationalism after war uh, all, were also arising. All resulted in further expulsion and relocation of these Jewish refugees, most to Western, to Western countries, to Israel. Uh, thus, a once flourishing community was in the vanishing process until the 1950s. So the last Jews left Shanghai about in 1959. And after that, uh, there are uh, hardly no, less, uh, no Jews left, uh, except some uh, married with Chinese or a mixed, some mixed child. <laughs> this is Jewish self appraisal. Jewish idealism in Shanghai was not overcome by any difficulties or obstructions, and the flag of the enthusiasm was kept high and in honor. Among the 80,000 or so Central European refugees in Shanghai, there were not any occupations which could better in bread only, solely on their own, than the artists to grow, especially the musicians. Their absolute will helped their self-entertainment business, 
which preserved their rich heritage of their former homeland, even in the condition of exile. And thus, they established a musical life from the ground up, a positive contribution to Shanghai by these immigrants. Thank you for your attendance and 